Well, I guess we're making this a series. Thank you all for the support on the last video, but if you're new to the channel or simply haven't seen what I guess I'll now call the first episode of this series, I recently asked all my subscribers to leave me some platinum suggestions, and we got over 30 unique games that I put into a website called the Picker Wheel. These suggestions range from nice and relaxing to ball busting and whatever game the wheel landed on I had to platinum. In the last video we got Sleeping Dogs which I had a lot of fun with, link in the description and in the top right hand corner if you want to catch up. And because I had so much fun with this idea, I'm ready to go again, this time with even more options. With all the new suggestions through the comments of the last video, we now have over 50 potential games to platinum. Make sure if you do want to keep seeing more videos like this in the future, be sure to leave the video a like, comment below some more platinum suggestions, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and let's spin that wheel to see what we get this time. Deathloop was actually an interesting game for me to get here because I love Arcane Studios games. Arx Fatalis, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, Dishonored, 2017's Prey, I even enjoyed Wolfenstein Youngblood which they co-developed with Machine Games. I didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. So I was excited to get my hands on Deathloop Day 1 and... It just was not my cup of tea. I played the game for about 8 hours on PC and it wasn't clicking with me the same way Arcane's previous games had and so I put the game down without finishing it and never really looked back. But as I say in my retrospectives, I'm always willing to give a game a second chance, especially in this instance because while it didn't take home game of the year, it still won a lot of impressive awards. So maybe I just was not into it at that particular time for whatever reason and I'd enjoy the game more today. Regardless of that fact though, I had to platinum this sucker, which according to PSN profiles isn't too difficult scoring a 4 out of 10 in difficulty and should only take about 20 hours or so. But the game only has a 1.5 platinum percentage so it's far from a gimme which is always fun. But if you're unfamiliar with Deathloop, here's a quick rundown. Set in an alternate world seemingly stuck in the 60s, Deathloop takes place over the course of a single day that is stuck on repeat on an island called Black Reef. Our protagonist Cole is stuck in said loop and the aim of the game is to escape the loop by killing 8 people known as visionaries in the span of one day. Deathloop is a first person shooter with your classic arcane elements, Dishonored like is the best way to describe it but a lesser emphasis on stealth and player choice in regards to the big targets this time around. Again, very basic description but if you're watching this without playing the game for yourself, it's all you really need to know. So with everyone caught up, let's get this platinum. Now step one is always pretty straightforward, beat the main game. In this step you're guaranteed to unlock 14 trophies. From completing missions and completing the steps to be able to kill every visionary in a single day. Instructions. Taking out and invading Juliana. <laughs> surviving a full day absorbing some residuum from a body and up to 20,000 in one time period which you need to infuse your loot from day to day and killing one visionary and each visionary at least once. These are completely unmissable during step 1. However, I did unlock quite a few more during this step simply by playing the game. You could definitely get more by the time you complete your first successful escape, but I managed to get a further 13 trophies under my belt by the end of the main game. The first two off the bat are actually Deathloop's two multiplayer trophies, which I went after after my game crashed, an occurrence that was a bit too frequent. But I actually really enjoyed this mode. For the two trophies, as Juliana, we needed to invade another player's world and take out all three of Colt's lives, which I managed to do on only my second attempt, and the other for using Juliana's masquerade slab to disguise herself as Cole, which took me a little bit longer to get. 
but I had a lot of fun with the multiplayer for the short time I spent with it, I wouldn't have been mad at a few more of these types of trophies honestly. Back to the main game though, I kicked some poor Eternalus off a ledge to his demise, got 3 machete kills in the span of 10 seconds, died 3 times ending my current loop due to getting far too cocky, getting a kill by igniting a gas cloud with someone inside it, entered the first code we get in the game in a random door, defeated everyone in a given time period and escaped, took out the visionary Fia without causing her to blow up the entire island, equipped 36 different trinkets to my loadout and took them into the field, completed an Eon dossier, got and infused every upgrade for a slab, and equipped a loadout worth more than 45,100 residum. Which unfortunately I forgot to press record and just have this lame picture. As I said before, you really can get a lot more trophies just by naturally playing the game as you'll see in the next step, but from my personal playstyle and taking me about 14 hours to get through the main content, these were the extras I got, leaving me with a decent sized task for step 2. For the second and really final step, again it's a simple one clean up. I still had over half the trophies still to be obtained, and this is where the real grind comes into play, almost doubling my overall time. We started this process off with a nice and easy trophy simply for defeating a visionary and escaping after beating the main game. No issues there, but for the rest, you really need to try and plan ahead. Now ideally in each loop you want to be multitasking a number of trophies at once to minimize continuous loops of the same four areas over and over again and I'll give you an example as to what I mean because I started off really well here. So the visionaries Charlie and Fia have a little love nest in the afternoon at Fristad Rock that has very few enemies along the way and is also nice and short with minimal room for failure. So to knock a few birds out with one stone, I made sure not to kill any Eternalists along the way, made sure I wasn't spotted, made sure I had a full loadout with every weapon and slab fully decked out, and had the Nexus ability and a powerful gun to take Charlie and Fia out with a single bullet and escape. This unlocked me 4 trophies. <laughs> which for a mission that takes maybe 5 minutes to get in and out is what we wanted to see and I tried my hardest to keep that sort of progress up throughout but there's a lot to keep track of here as you'll see shortly. Next up we got the trophy for completing an entire loop with the class pass. This just involved getting the pass from Fristad Rock in the morning that disables your slabs and respawns and loading into each time of day and immediately backing out until the loop was finished. It's a cheese but no slabs or respawns sounds like no fun. We made an enemy slip on some lollies on the floor, killed Frank with a slab ability, and put Alexis through his own meat grinder, which for visionary specific kills were pretty simple. Defeating Harriet with poison gas, not so much. I tried and failed this so many times because if she fires her gun, the gas explodes and means it wasn't a gas kill. So this one took a few tries but we did finally manage to stun lock her enough to let the gas do its thing. Took down Charlie within the rules of his game, basically just turned his minions against him. Defeated all the versions of Wenji in under 90 seconds, which sounded easy enough, but again, took me a few tries to figure out the right pathing, and is surprisingly one of the rarest trophies in this game. Took out Igor while using his nullifier, making him completely visible. And in the process also got a trophy for killing a visionary and escaping without using a gun which is really easy in this stage, as long as Juliana doesn't invade. 
the reason why I didn't also get another trophy in the same step. So that was all the visionary specific deaths out the way, which I wanted to do nice and early to make sure I at least got all the slab upgrades for the next step, which was the slab related challenges. First off the bat, we transmitted damage over 20 meters using Nexus, transported an enemy onto a mine with shift, which was actually the first time I found out we even had mines. Must have been a tutorial thing I forgot. I thought we had grenades only and I needed to hack a mine, but no, this one was really simple. Killed three enemies with Aether without being spotted. Caused an ungodly amount of damage with Havoc, which basically meant going to the dance floor in the evening with a shotgun and wreaking, well, Havoc and got three headshot kills while enemies were airborne with Carnesis. These were all pretty simple. It's basically all about going to the right spots at the right time and that left me with only a few remaining trophies for the main game, so I shifted my focus onto the golden update trophies. There's only four, but they're nothing too challenging. All you need to do is get a kill with a paint bomb, kill the garbage collector and get his new slab, this guy is a tough one though, do not take him lightly. Use the experimental machine to craft new trinkets and obtain the new weapon called the Halps Prototype and use it to take out a visionary. Again, a really simple addition to the trophy list, making going for 100% on top of the platinum no extra hassle. But here's where the trophy list started to worry me a little bit. Some more than others, but they all involved a few loops on their own to complete. First off being surprisingly just infusing one of each type of weapon. Sounds simple enough until you realize the number of legendary weapons that can only be obtained from certain visionaries by completing one of Charlie's many games, completing a puzzle, whatever it is. Granted, these are badass weapons, but at this point it was hard to pair those loops with anything else. In the same vein, we also have to find and kill the mostly naked person in every map at every time of day. This takes a few loops, you may have gotten a few just by playing, but still it's loading in, finding the guy, and then getting out. It's not that exciting. We also needed to die in every way, from gunfire to being exploded by a rocket, which had me searching around for a while to find out what the hell I was missing. I knew I'd been shot, fallen, drowned, exploded, all the level specific ones, I couldn't figure it out until it clicked that these melee units are terrible. You actually have to try and die to these guys or be on such low health and walk into them. I did finally succumb to this dangerous fate though and nab the trophy. <laughs> A Charlie Montague game is where without the internet I'd have no idea what I was doing. They're fun enough challenges from platforming to speedrunning to quizzes, but honestly I had no idea some of these challenges existed until I looked up what the hell this trophy even was. It's another trophy that takes a few loops and it feels like a cool secret, but because it's a trophy I just felt like it needed more clues to point you in the right direction in game. The wake up challenge in particular where you need to open four presents in less than three minutes around the map. Anyway, with just three trophies left, we were almost done and yet simultaneously, I thought I'd save the worst for last. The GOD of OSP, I flat out did three or four times throughout the game up to this point, going after and defeating Igor in the evening with no loadout because there's no enemies really to worry about, but it was not popping, so I thought I was bugged out of the platinum altogether. And the other two were Ghost at the Feast for killing all three visionaries at Alexis's party without being scene and leaving through the tunnels and cleanish hands for successfully completing the loop, defeating all visionaries but not a single Eternalist. That last one in particular I still had no clue how I'd go, it seemed so impossible to me for reasons I'll explain soon. But first I gave the no loadout trophy another shot, this time turning my online status to friends only mode. Which means unless you've got a friend playing, Juliana will not invade, saving me the headache. And that actually seemed to work, because for whatever reason I took care of Igor and escaped and it popped. Fifth times the charm I guess. 
But now onto the ones that really worried me. One, I could kill Eternalist but not be seen, which wasn't that big a deal as that was sort of my playstyle anyway. Though I did like relying on my guns being better than my enemies if I got into a pinch. That's the one I went for first to get some practice for the final run. Again, friends only mode really helps here because if Juliana spots you, that counts as being spotted. So to play it safe, it's easiest to just switch modes. But to my surprise, Ghost at the Feast was smooth sailing. Again, I can kill any Eternalist that may prove to be a problem, as long as I don't cause too much unnecessary ruckus and know the best way into the party. This is nice and breezy. All we need to do is sneak across the rooftops into the castle, drop Alexis back into the grinder and take out Wenji and Igor with Nexus. Unless for some reason they're apart and then it causes a bit more of a problem. But luckily I stealth killed Wenji and used my silenced machine gun to take out Igor from a distance and slipped away into the tunnels to unlock the trophy. Plainish hands on the other hand I was dreading because for some reason I thought not killing Eternalus for whatever reason meant I also couldn't be spotted by any. Which if you know how Harriet's encounter is laid out and how to sabotage Igor into attending the party seemed impossible. But you can be spotted. Just don't kill any Eternalus along the way or hack anything that could do so and you're fine. At least that was the case for me. I have heard this trophy can be a little buggy but for me, I did it on my first attempt through all of my previous loop knowledge of these areas. This took me a total of 15 minutes. It was surprisingly simple, just some close calls with Igor's sabotage because the nullifier and aether don't mix and plenty of enemies are always around but with all 8 visionaries dead once again, the trophy popped along with my 45th Platinum and our time with Deathloop was over. So, after 27 hours in total, what did I think of Deathloop's Platinum and really the game in general? I seriously loved it, which as I said in the intro, I was not expecting. In terms of the game itself, this story had me by the balls. I loved figuring out every step to get these visionaries into the same loop, the performances for all the characters are done incredibly well. For a game that is stuck on repeat, I didn't get tired of these environments until very late into my Platinum process, maybe the last couple of hours. The game the gameplay is crisp, the setting is awesome and the multiplayer is a blast as well. I had a great time with the game and when the story was done I was excited to keep playing and going for this platinum which really isn't too bad to get aside from a few trophies that aren't all that challenging just without direction leave you guessing as to what exactly is involved. But I did this all over the course of a few days and I was obsessed with this game. It's not my favourite arcane title but I get it now. This is a seriously impressive game with a fun platinum to boot that not too many people have which makes it that little bit more cool to add to the collection. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more platinum suggestions. I'd love to keep this series going. Shout out to the channel members Infamous Sir Hellfire, Featuring Gagiano, Christian Vilegag, Cloud Connection, Kranitoko, Crumb Sparky, and Driftum for that extra level of support. I truly do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mare Hair Bear, and I'll catch you all in the next video.